Hey guys, how are you doing? It's Crystal Ann Compton and today we have a special video because this video is actually taken from a recent episode of the Light Shine podcast. The Light Shine podcast is a podcast that I do with my BFF spiritual channel, medium and animal communicator, Trisha Carr. We actually also have a YouTube and I will drop the link to our YouTube in the description box below. Please subscribe so you can stay connected to our podcast uploads and also our live streams and other content. Well, without further ado, let's get in to today's Lightshine Podcast video. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Light Shine Podcast. We are your hosts. I'm Trisha Carr, and this is the wonderful, gorgeous, spiritual teacher, intuitive channel, and just all around brilliant and beautiful woman, my best friend, Crystal Ann Compton. <laughs> Hello. Well, that was very lovely. Thank you. Now I'm definitely high vibe after all of that. That's fantastic. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Really having so much fun with this podcast that we're mm -hmm. doing now. Mm -hmm. I mean, we spend so much time together and we have these conversations like just casually. So we're like, let's turn some microphones on. <laughs> let's share it a little bit more. 100%. I mean, we're already having the conversation. Let's bring in some more folks. We can mm -hmm. all have the conversation together. And today, I'm actually going to be taking a question from, it looks like someone on my YouTube channel, in my YouTube community. Um, a while back, I had asked people just to ask me some questions because I'd like to, you know, make some videos helping folks out. And we did get a really cool question. I thought we'd bring it to the podcast. And this question comes from someone called The Summerland. The Summerland, mm -hmm. which I love. Um, the Summerland says, any suggestions on how to survive difficult challenges and severe health issues? I'm trying to keep my vibration high, but I struggle with so much. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. this is such a good question, mainly because I actually hear it a lot. You know, when we're up in our community and we're maybe doing some readings, we we usually have somebody say, hey, I'm, I'm, I've got chronic fatigue or I've got some kind of an illness and, you know, I don't know what to do about it. Is there a way I can heal it? Like, how can I live high vibration with, with such kind of a big illness that brings me down generally, or even just depression. People who have depression are struggling to manage that and also show up in a high vibration way in the world. And so we wanted to have a conversation about this. We should probably start by saying, I don't think there's really any easy answer here. And I want to acknowledge that this is hard. I personally have gone through catastrophic illness, almost died. I was in a coma. I mean, I like for real, I, I, uh, and it was a hard time in my life. I did, that was probably for about a year or two. And because of the, uh, because of the acute nature of my illness and how it affected me, it plummeted me into depression and anxiety, which I then had to deal with on, on top of everything. It was just kind of this big, well, I don't want to swear, but a big S storm, you know, and, and mm -hmm. I had to navigate my way through that while trying to be positive for my newborn child, newly married, trying to be positive and optimistic so I could continue on my spiritual path. And it was really really hard. And so I don't think that, I think it's a management thing. I think it's okay. This is the issue I have. This is where my body is at. Let's not deny that. Let's not pretend that this isn't happening. We take care of the body. We give the body, the mind, the spirit, the, the space that it needs to heal and to adjust and to, to fine tune in the way that it can. And we also don't pretend that having an illness in some way means there's something bad about me. Like, oh, I must have karmically done something terrible in a past life, or I must not believe enough. Therefore, I've manifested this terrible condition or this terrible illness. I don't believe that at all. I do believe that we often build trials and tribulations to include health tribulations into our soul blueprint, like the blueprint we bring into this life planning out the life we're going to live. Many of us choose to have an illness or to have a condition so that we can learn from it. There is the saying that pain is a, the greatest teacher or a great teacher. And I believe it because when we're in times of pain, we really have to dig a little deeper or really aim a little higher to be present in this life. And there's, there's some beautiful things that you can learn from being in an illness. Would you agree, Trisha? Mm, yes. And I do think that you know, in 
in our spiritual seeking and our kind of metaphysical perspective, we are taught and we understand that we we are capable of creating our lives, of changing energy from one form to another. And I do think that sometimes out there in those uh, streets, we we get the message that somehow, like you said, there's something wrong with us or we're doing it wrong. And I completely disagree with that. I I think that one way to look at it is, well, first of all, I'll say, I'll just call that what I think it is. I think it's very old fashioned superstition. I think it's like, harkens to more primitive times when oh they have this these this family had a child who's ill that means that their family is cursed by their ancestors the gods are against them and we should shun them from our community because they're going to bring on more damnation blah 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 that are just the ways that it it is in dogmatic religions and all of the other things i'm just going to call that what it is and we are not impervious to it just because we're doing a, a kind of different brand, what some people would call new age or metaphysics or mysticism. We are not impervious to it because it is a human tendency to get a little bit superstitious or dogmatic. And I think that the, the interest there, that that human tendency to do that is to somehow take responsibility, albeit and it is sort of doing it the wrong way. It's 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 taking the it's taking a left turn down the wrong street. What I think, how we can balance this, I can create my life, I do create my life, energy creates, you know, things, is to think about microscopic and macroscopic. So yes, it is true, my health and well-being is governed by my vibration. And yet, there that is my microscopic view, but there is a macroscopic, as Crystal was saying, some something in the blueprint, something that is more universal. That's how I. That's what helps me to understand it a little bit. And of course, that may not help us when we're in chronic illness, because then we're going to be like fist to the higher self. Why did you bring this upon me? But there's there's just so much going on, and there is a person who is experiencing illness, however great or small, has not done something wrong, and that definitely is not the place to start because. All experiences are valid when we're talking about eternity. We're talking about, um, you know, God being the essence of everything. All things are valid. And, you know, it's it's okay to be frustrated. It's okay to be angry even if you're dealing with a physical illness. So, you know, we just, I, I think Crystal and I just really want to start there and say that we do not uh, we do not align with any perspective that somehow you are responsible for your illness and that you're just not doing spirituality right. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and both Crystal and I will sometimes do that. I'm going to have something going on a little bit chronically. And I'll be like, am I, what am I doing, Crystal? And she'll, you know, with me. And it's like, you know, it's a place to, it's okay also to start there a little bit, but really give yourself the opportunity to expand and, and give yourself the grace because there's a different, there's an opportunity there. It's, it's so hard. I don't want to, again, I don't want to diminish anyone's pain or suffering because right. that's real. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I think that for those who are suffering or who have issues in the physical body, it's important not to compare and contrast, like look at everybody else and how they're living. I think we have this particular condition for a reason. And I remember, Trisha, many years ago, I was in Hawaii and I got this terrible ear infection. It was swimmer's ear and... I was actually there on vacation. I was born and raised in Hawaii, but I was there on vacation traveling from Chicago. And it got really bad really quickly. And it got so bad that I was unable to travel back home. And I was I was staying at the Turtle Bay Resort, which was like $500 a night. I'm like, I got to get out of here. Like, I can't afford to continue to stay at Turtle Bay, but I could not travel. And I remember, and I was misdiagnosed the first time. So I was given the wrong medication. It's a whole story. But the thing is, I remember being in that room by myself with my pain. And at some point, I had to just be present with it. And I I had a very interesting experience when I just started to listen to the pain. Like it was a throbbing that was taking place in my ear. And every time the throbbing came up to a crescendo, I was just present with it. And I don't know how to explain this other than to say I transformed it from just an acute, terrible experience into something that was a little transcendent. Like I was so present with what my body was saying to me and... In that space, it was so insular. 
I was with myself, you know, and with my thoughts and with the vibration of my body, it gave me an opportunity to be hyper present. Now, am I saying that I would like that experience again? Well, absolutely not. It had me leveled out on the floor. It was absolutely terrible. But that moment, that insular experience with just listening to myself and listening to what the body was saying and feeling it and allowing myself to feel it on every level felt really profound at the time. And I think when we're going through illness, often this is the life saying, okay, we need, we need you to slow down. We need you to rest. We need you to be quiet. Like take some time to listen to what the body is saying and what the thoughts are saying, and what the beliefs are saying. Take some time to just withdraw from everything else that is happening in the life landscape and see what's going on inside of you, because that's where all the good stuff is. And most of us, we never really look at that. Or if we do, it's for 10 or 15 minutes a day, but we don't spend sufficient time tending to that inner world. And suffering in this way, not suffering, let me take that back, because it's not suffering. Being present in this way, in the pain, allows us to do that. Hey everyone, it's that time of year again. Time for the Intuitive Intensive. The Intuitive Intensive is a 12-week immersive educational and group coaching program designed to blast open your psychic intuitive abilities. There's no going back. I can't unsee all the things that I've seen. I can't unfeel all the things that I've felt. It's, it's, it's been life changing, not just because of everything that I've learned, but everything that I've experienced. I am always so afraid of being seen. That's something that makes me want to hide, but this is just making me want to come out. Class begins January 18th, 2021. Registration is open now and all levels of development are welcome. Serious students only. This program is taught by myself, Trisha Carr, and Crystal Ann Compton. Find the link to read more and register in the description below. We hope to see you in class. Yes, that's so beautiful. And I've heard many stories like that. People, I I remember hearing one story of this woman with some kind of painful um, terminal illness, and she was unable to get out of bed and and at some point she just it kind she had that moment where it just there was a, a breaking of that the resistance to it of, of, in some way and then she she just fell into this ecstasy and was just enjoying her being and she described it even like as her body and was just in this ex- ecstasy and now i i definitely don't want to cast the um the challenge to anyone and say, if you're not experiencing ecstasy with your pain, you're doing it wrong. I'm just saying that it, I think that pain, the the only thing or illness, the only thing I can think to do is that in, to go more insular because it does inhibit us from bringing, you know, our life force energy out into the world. So I guess the only thing to do is to somehow get more insular. And that's not always easy to do. But I don't know, you know, I definitely don't want to be the one who says that I have all the answers. Mm -mm. I just want to, we want to be here to offer compassion and I don't know, the best that we know, we don't think that there is any, and I think it is so individual. I think that pain or illness is nuanced and completely unique in the situations. Mm -hmm. But I would just like to hope, I'd like to have hope around it, that there is an opportunity to experience grace or to experience something beautiful about yourself and or life. Yes. <laughs> ecstasy is a great, that's what it felt like. It felt like an ecstasy when I stopped resisting what was happening or trying to fix what was going on or like make this better. No, I'm just going to be right here. This is it's all, this is all I can do is be right here. It kind of gave way to this beautiful pleasure in that pain. But you also see across history, you know, great, great people who suffered with illness and who, For example, uh, Jesus, you know, he didn't have an illness, but he suffered very greatly. And many people venerate and revere this suffering that he did. But when we look at Jesus on the cross in this abject pain and suffering, we see his process of consciousness very clearly, don't we? Like we have this one moment where Jesus is on this cross and he's pissed off. Father, why have you forsaken me? I've spent my whole life doing what you told me to do. I've been excellent. Of course, I'm adding some stuff in there. That's how I'd feel, though, if I were Jesus. Like I did it. I did all the things. I walked on water. I gave everybody bread and fishes. It was a party. Like, why am I up here, Father? Why have you forsaken me? 
that was, an, that was an area of consciousness that he needed to be in right then. And then we see sort of this arc and spectrum as he crosses, you know, this eclipsing moment where he gets to, Father, please forgive them for they know not what they do. In his suffering, we are able to see the passage of his consciousness in this way. In your suffering, there are many opportunities. In the pain, there is many opportunities to understand yourself and to understand creator more deeply. And this is so impactful. And by the way, I will say, having been in and out of hospitals myself, with my mother, having gone into hospitals and then hospice, I've seen many people in terrific amounts of pain be 100% high vibration, like be a blessing to those beleaguered nurses who are going room to room and we're probably dealing with all manner of things. But then you get to that one patient who's just all smiles, even though they're terminal, even though they're in pain, they're all smiles. Thank you so much. So grateful. They're able to be present in what's happening within their body, but also be a light in that circumstance. And so for those of us who have illnesses, and maybe we have lifetime chronic illnesses, we're not going to get away from them. You have been given a special opportunity to know yourself on a deeper level than most people ever do, and to also understand life in the creator in a way that most people never will, and to shine your life through it all. And maybe that doesn't make you happy because it still hurts. And I get it. But I think that might be where the value is within it. And it's kind of a higher cross, but it's a powerful and important place to be. It's a different Mm -hmm. kind of light, let's say, and the world needs that kind of light. So that's kind of the way that I reconcile illness and pain and suffering in this way. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Well, I think that that can just about do it for this episode. Uh, Stay tuned just after our our little outro um, music. You'll hear us talk about the intuitive intensive that's coming up. And if you are going through any kind of pain or suffering or illness right now, we just want to send you love and support. And we want you to know that we, we really truly do want to, you know, support those who are in the, in those situations, because we've all been there ourselves. There's nothing wrong with you and there's nothing flawed or broken in you. Even if the body is in this time broken, you know what I mean? That's a part of the humanity, but being a human is uh, overall, it can be the most beautiful. I believe that you chose to be human because of the beauty in being a human. And so with that, with love and gratitude and appreciation, We'll call this an episode of the Light Shine Podcast, and we'll see you next time. Bye, guys.